Hello and welcome. Yes, we have gathered here again, only a small group of us this time, to talk about another dinosaur episode. And this time it's a Matt Smith one. And it's dinosaurs on a spaceship. Yes. So let's start off today with Beef Dad. Go ahead, Beef Dad. Right. Shall they get on to this? Well, let's put it like this. He has an adventure and he decides that he's going to need a gang. That, that I find very amusing. Um, so you end up with Amy Pond, Rory Williams, by accident, Rory Williams' father, and a stepladder which might come in handy, but you never know. Um, Queen Nefertiti from ancient Egypt. And Riddle, played by Rupert Graves, a big game hunter and explorer. Um, they end up on a space station, which is heading towards Earth. Um, the Indian Space Agency have decided that if it gets too close, they're going to blow it out of the sky. And, yep, you've got a few interesting performances. Um, Indira, played by Sunetra Saka, is running the um, Indian Space Agency that are going to send up the missiles to blow it up. And she's a character that eventually you just end up wanting to slap her. That's how I felt about it. I just wanted to slap her. I really did. Um, Nefertiti, it turns out to be as tough as old boots. Um, she's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, Mark Williams playing Brian, Rory's father, is just absolutely superb. You've got a Triceratops that chases golf balls, which is a bit of magic. And the whole thing starts off when they arrive there with a couple of fighting Ankylosaurus. And this, they, oddly enough, are a dinosaur that you very seldom see in anything. You get the Brontosauri, the Stegosauri, the... Um, What else? Triceratops. Um, and of course, you always, always get the T-Rex. I'm a bit sick of seeing those damn things. But this time, for once, we actually got a proper dinosaur that isn't often seen, which is the Ankylosaurus. And they used to defend themselves basically by using this great big spiky club of a tail. Um, wonderful. And it was really nice to see those. You also had in this um, David Bradley playing Solomon, who is basically a space pirate. Um, later would go on to play the Doctor, the first Doctor. But in this, he is absolutely brilliant. Wonderfully sinister and unpleasant and just vaguely disgusting. And he is served by two of the campest robots ever to be put on film. They are the most extraordinarily camp robots, voiced by David Mitchell and Robert Webb. So, I mean, they would have to be um, two of Britain's leading comedians. Uh, absolutely hysterical. Um, just loved every minute of this episode. They are, it, it is definitely one for the adults. Um, there are double entendres absolutely everywhere. And it, it's just, basically, it's a little piece of who magic for me. What, what are you giving it? What's your score? I don't know. Um, well, I think I might give it a 10. A 10? Wow, yeah. there we are. Let's start a on ten. a positive note. 
a 10. Now let's move over to, let's see if he likes it any better, Jimmy. Well, watching the episode again made me realize how much I miss Amy and Rory. I really uh, miss them a lot. I like Rory more than I like Amy. I think Arthur Darville has great comedic timing. He's a great actor. Um, seeing him and uh, Williams together, they had a great repertoire. They really did believe that they were father and son and had been to, uh, that he was in Rory's life, most of Rory's life. Uh, Solomon is kind of like an evil version of the Doctor. A time traveler, dude, that's a pirate. The Doctor administers justice to him at the end by uh, allowing him to burn. The episode is a, just a great romp. It's just, uh, I mean, there are, is some dark periods in it. But it's really just a fun episode to watch. The special effects, of course, are top notch. Um, I'd give the episode a, a nine out of ten. A nine. So we've had a ten and a nine. So let's move over to see what Dino Derek thinks. Our very own Lee. Go ahead, Lee. Right, thanks for that introduction there, Alid. Um, I'll start by saying what I didn't like about this, shall I? Um, I didn't see the point in having Nefertiti there, or Amy there, to be brutally honest, because she didn't have much to do in the story. And while the Doctor was very friendly with a, a game hunter, it goes against the character of the Doctor because, you know, all life is precious with the Doctor. So I don't know why he's really friendly with a game hunter. Um, that's going to be mine of gripes. This story is all about double acts. You've got Rory and his dad. You've got the two robots. And you've got the Doctor and Tracy the tri Triceratops. For me, all those double acts there work so well. Um, the Doctor's childlike fascination just gets you from the start draws you in i mean matt smith is so brilliant at doing acting that way it's so brilliant the way he does it um matt williams and sir arthur darvel as everybody else has said they just work so well off each other uh it's a shame we do not get much uh matt williams after this episode only one more episode and then he's gone it's just, you know it's a pity the cat bring him back though did a, a third one just to say goodbye to Amy and Rory, but you know, and the robots, the Mitchell and you know, Mitchell and Webb, as as Beef Dad said, so camp but so funny, and and the effects, we finally get to see some well realised dinosaurs in Doctor Who, as we were talking the other day about the invasion of the dinosaurs. This one does top the effects, but of course we're in the modern age now so all in all i enjoyed it it's a good romp there's man and niggles there you know amy didn't need her there so for that reason i'm giving it an eight an eight so we seem to be going down point by point we started off with a 10 went to a nine now we've gone to an eight from lee thank you lee and now we're going to go over to texas t-rex tim I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, like, like others have said, this is a romp. Um, it's a fun romp. It's, it actually fits their uh, movie of the week design for this series uh, because it's, it's very quick. The doctor has a gang. He goes and picks up people that he's had adventures with, and he picks up Amy and Rory and inadvertently Rory's dad. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very funny. Like Beef Dad said, um, it's got a lot of adult humor in it that'll fly right over the kids' heads, but it's also very good for kids because it's got dinosaurs in it. It's almost like they said, let's just come up with an idea, dinosaurs on a spaceship. There you go and built a story around it. It's a very good story. It's a fun story. It looks very good. Uh, I disagree with Lee. Amy is very good in this one. She gets something to do. She is. Um, uh, she takes charge. She finds out what happens. She's got her own companion. She's like her own doctor in a way. 
because uh, she's hanging out with uh, Riddell and, and Nefertiti. And she's, um, she figures out what happens to the Silurians, what happened to them, why they're not there. And um, she figures it out long before the doctor does because they're separated. Um, but th- it's, it's, it's a fun story. I think um, it's a great one you would want to show to somebody if you're trying to introduce the show to them. Say, look how good this show is because it's very funny. It's got everything. It's got action. It's got humor. The cast is uniformly great in this. I mean, there's not a, there's not a dud part in it. Like you said, you got camp robots. That's hilarious. So um, this is an easy 10 for me. I really enjoyed this one. Well, we've shot up back to a 10. Well, this is getting high praise this episode, isn't it? Now, let's see what Brian thinks, because Brian might not like it. What do you think, Brian? Well, for me, this episode, I did like it. I, I, I thought it's like an enjoyable Doctor Who episode that is just pretty much anyone could have possibly watched over and over again. It's, at least to me, it's that much fun to watch. Uh, like the uh, story, the uh, the the villain, the villain, the uh, what, what's his name? The the guy that played Hartnell in Adventures of Space and Time, and also was in Harry Potter. He he, uh, he was great. I, I loved him as the villain. Uh, not much on the robots though. The robots are stupid i hate them um but the uh i didn't really think i didn't think it, there was a point of the uh the two other companions that the doctor had beside amy and Lori, and and also along with well, his father, he was great, by the way. I loved him. I, I, I agree with uh, Lee that they should have more of Lowy's father. But the only thing that they had was a, like, a kind of uh, a little mini thing, like which was an, even filmed, like a film live action kind of thing, but it was still like a kind of Doctor Who type of thing like before his father reading a letter that well he wrote but still I wish they filmed that so we could at least got to see his like act of playing while he's died one more time like Lee said so but yeah I really enjoyed this episode I I loved it I mean I am um, just a fun Doctor Who episode that I think is just like I said, watchable at least multiple times, and I love it. I just, I think it should deserve at least maybe mm, six TARDISes at the most. So six TARDISes at a ten from Brian. Well, now what do I think about it? And I have to agree with everybody else, really. It's fun. That's what it is. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. The acting is great. It really is. Uh, Rory's dad is great. Um, it's, it's just brilliant. And it's, it's funny, you know, the, uh, the golf ball scene, you know, we won't go too much into that, but that's funny. And um, it's, it's, just, it's just funny. It's just good. It's just a good watch. It, it's not my favorite. It's what it's, it's, one of my favourites of Series 7, but Series 7 on a whole isn't that good. Um, but I like it. I do. I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Matt Smith. I'm not a big fan of um, Amy or Rory, but I like them in this one. You know, I think they come into their own in a way. And, and for that, and I, I think I would give it, a, I'll give it a, a 7. I'll go with a 7. I enjoy it, but it, it, it's definitely not my favourite. The Matt Smith era as a whole isn't my favourite. So, you know, it, get, it gets a seven from me. Does anybody have anything they would like to add? I, 
I like the idea too that you see more. Well, it, well, you were talking about the Matt Smith era, but this doctor has so many adventures off screen that they hint at, and it's that's they pair that over with the Capaldi doctor as well. For example, at the end of this episode, you see that that the doctor runs off with Roy's dad and has several adventures here and there. He sends him all the postcards and stuff, you know, which is, is something you'll never see on TV. But I mean, it's implied, just like it's implied, that he hangs out with his game hunter and he hangs out with Nefertiti and he just goes yeah, and picks them up, you know, like. I think that's really cool. I mean, uh, you're talking about a doctor that spent, you know, how many hundreds of years on a cloud as well. So, I mean, ever since, um, I guess, Stephen Moffat has taken over the show, you have this, this, these doctors that have a lot of stuff off screen. In other words, the episodes don't go right into each other. There's always something going on in between. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. Well, right, because we have a new arrival. So I'm going to hand it over to Beef. Yes, hello. Yes. Um... It is, it is an interesting mix of this episode. I, I don't think you need to look very deep into it to find anything, you know, um, any sort of subtext to it or any sort of secondary plot to it, really. It is just basically what you get, which is a roller coaster ride from start to finish. That, you know, it's a, a pirate on a spaceship you know, that's hurtling out of control. There's dinosaurs. It's just a very simple, fun adventure um with excellent touches of comedy by you know not only the principal cast um but the supporting s cast that you have on it um most particularly uh rory's dad you know who's fantastic to be honest with you he's one of those you know great characters that will just pop up a couple of times you know the equal cringing moments when he embarrasses his son um to the points where you know just having a pocket full of gadgets and uh, and stuff just floating around like yeah you know, like some dads do that we have just yeah you know, eccentric strange parents um um aside from that I, on the negative point you know um i do find the robots immensely irritating um i think you wanted to have two comedy robots you have to have comedians for it so they go for a comedy double act or someone like mitchell and webb to be honest with you they, they just got tiresome to be honest with you the, you know the dinosaurs don't play a huge part really but it's it's fun to be honest with you, it, it's definitely, I think, if you wanted to look at it, it's a good starter episode, especially if you want to get kids into it. So it is very solid. Um, I do like um, the, the fact that, you know, like Tim was saying, that he's, there's others that always happen with it. That's why you've got these two, you know, stand-in companions. Now he has a gang. So, you know, it's very good. Um, I did like the uh, how joke with the Daisy Daisy as the robots um, power off. So it's solid and it does what it says on the tin. So it's a, a satisfactory seven and a half. It's not the greatest. By no means is it worst. It's just an enjoyable little you know, ride along episode. There you have it, an enjoyable little ride along episode. And that's a seven and a half from Beef. Now I'm going to open the floor back up to anybody who wants to say anything. Well, I, I just like to, like, I have a question here. Like, Texas Tim over here said that, uh, like, there's a bit of gaps, like, stories in between like is that only for this season or is that like well uh, Matt Smith's one as the doctor I never realized I that say, until now. throughout his throughout his run as the doctor he's always doing something in between not not always but there's several times when he, he's like I mean like how long did he spend by himself after he lost Damien Rory it was like 300 years or something on a cloud um for example, I'm just saying they give you all these spaces, you know, whereas, whereas, you know, for example, the tenant run was pretty much altogether one story and, and yeah. he was a very quick doctor. He was only the doctor for, for a, a small amount of time. Whereas, uh, like Trenzalor, he spends what, how many thousands of years on Trenzalor fighting off, um, whatever he actually ages to death almost. Um, and then you, you, they've carried that along with Capaldi as well. Capaldi drops Clara off several times and, and goes and, does whatever he wants, has adventures that are off screen and comes back and picks her up. And we see that more and more. I think that's a cool thing. I think that's very cool. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah. I, I like the fact that, they, yeah. that he goes off on other adventures and things. 
Yeah, I, I, uh, I wasn't sure if that was just for Maximus Run or just. But it, it also gives um, it also gives Big Finish a chance to fill those gaps in in the near future. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and books and comic books, all those take place yeah. in between episodes. Yeah, he, he um, just went out to get some licorice and left Riddell with two dancers. No, there's well, there's literally a story, I'm sorry, uh, but after after Deep Breath, when she, he goes to get coffee for Clara, he actually has, yeah. there's actually a book where that, that takes place during that, that time, and he's actually carrying around two cups of coffee for the whole story. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I mean, and, and then of course you see, you see in the next episode into the Dalek, he's over there with his coffee for her. So it's, it's really, uh, it's amazing how they do that. It allows, it it allows yeah. other mediums, you know, like um, the books or the audios to, to jump in, doesn't it? And fill in the gap sort of thing. Yes. I mean, I, there's a, I mean, also there's like another episode like where I think there should be, well, not maybe not should be, but may like possibly be a, Big finish or a book or whatever, which is uh, uh, under the lake with the recent season that was just finished. Uh, like Carl and the doctor come out of the TARDIS, and Carl mentions like something about an adventure that that ju that they just did, but wasn't never on screen. So I think maybe like I said, like. Uh, in a previous cast, uh, they should possibly do one like for a big finish or something. So, no, I don't know if anyone else noticed it, but there was a particular little, it was just a very simple, quick throwaway line with a beautiful biblical reference. Ah, Jimmy looks puzzled. <laughs> um, when the doctor says, you shouldn't mess with an Egyptian queen, Solomon. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, absolutely wonderful. Very, very clever little reference. But the, the thing is, it was full of clever little references. Little jokes. Jokes for adults. Jokes for kids. Um, it was, a, as, as Timothy said, it was a romp. But I will take exception to the one thing my son said <laughs> and i thought the robots were brilliant mm. i i still think they were really really funny um i think they were can i can i ask a question about that only if you're good is it, is it because uh, is, it, is it because they were a comedy duo that you actually are familiar with because i wasn't so it didn't bother me who they were acting T to be honest with you for the fact that they're a comedy duo it, it doesn't bother me nor is it the idea that it's um like like the you know the recent spate of comedians that we have who have who've been in the show because you know certainly people like frank skinner um rufus hound have been excellent so i i can't say that on a you know a historical problem that you know comedians i have a problem with it's just it's I, I think the idea of the, the, the comedy double act robot thing has been done a lot. So it just, I, I, it just, it just ties me a little bit. Isn't it? Yeah. That's just a personal thing with me. I think it is. It's not to the detriment. It's just, you know, how I find it. That's all. I mean, I, until I actually looked at the cast list, I didn't realize it was Mitchell and Webb, um, to be honest. And, I just went, sat back and went, went with it and just roared with laughter. It just made me laugh. I wasn't worried about whether it was an actual comedy double act or not. I just think that the inclusion of those two were, were really funny. No, I, no, I'm sorry. For, for me, it's, uh, it's, Tom, uh, it's, the, it's uh, Rory's dad freaking out, to be honest with you. That is, that's, he steals that, to be honest with you. On a comedic front, I I think personally, anyway. Oh yes. yeah, he got yeah. he got all the best stuff. Yeah, yeah that cool yeah. image of him, with him sitting inside the TARDIS door, having a sandwich and coffee, yeah. looking over the planet. That's brilliant. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that was just down to the light bulb drop at the start. It's yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's a great watch all the way through. Yeah. So is that it then? Yeah. Uh, Lee, Dino might. <laughs> Lee, Lee, what does your cat have to say about the episode? <laughs> Can we have the cat's opinion? Ow, ow. She's, she's ow, ow, is that what she says? Yeah, she's, 
She's got her clothes where the shunt is. No. Oh dear, oh, we better <laughs> we better get going and we <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. And as always, thank you to everybody here for joining me. And thank you to you sat watching and take care and we will see you next time and keep on hooing.